A phase space is very different. Because when we represented this gravitational field or this wind field or this temperature field um, with a bunch of numbers, we're representing a bunch of numbers in the world at various places in the physical world. Yeah. A phase space is different from that. A phase space is a mathematical representation of a system in an abstract mathematical space. The simplest example that physicists usually use is a, a pendulum. If I look at a swinging pendulum, there are two obvious quantities I can measure about it. I can measure where it is on its path. So it's here, now it's here, now it's here, now it's here. And I can measure how fast it's going. Okay? Okay? It's going in what direction, right? It's going this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. Sometimes it's going fast, sometimes it's going slow. Where is a pendulum going its fastest? It's or When it's when it's swinging down, well, when it middle. when it reaches, yeah, when it when reaches, reaches the bottom, the bottom. Of its swing, right? It comes up here, it slows down, it, slows it stops, down, and, then, and then it comes to speeds up, the middle, it's right? And it starts to slow down again, and then stops, and then right. speeds up and slows down. So we could draw a picture of the path of a pendulum through space. That would be really simple. It goes this way, then 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 this way. Okay, that's just a drawing of its trajectory in the world. That's not what a phase space is. A phase space is representing the parameters of that system in an abstract graph. So the two things we're going to measure about the system are its position. So we'll say this is towards the right, and this is towards the left, and its speed. So this is um, faster. Uh, we'll call the positive direction to the right, and this is faster to the left. Okay, so we're graphing where it is on its path and relating that to how fast it's going. So we'll start it over here on the left. Start. Could you put faster left on the left side of that line? Would that make more sense at the bottom? Um, I'm, I'm asking. I mean, probably it doesn't. I mean, it's uh, what it I really should. Matter, it? The way I should really, the way I should really write it is like this. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. It's hard to write that way. Yeah. So it starts all the way over to the left, but it starts with a speed of zero. Right. When it gets mm -hmm. up here, it stops. So the first point is it's all the way to the left, but its speed is zero. Right. Then what does it do? It moves towards the right, but it also speeds up towards the right. Right? So it goes from here, 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 here. In other words, it's getting moving more and more towards the right, but it's also moving faster and faster towards the right. Until it gets to the middle of its swing where it's going its fastest. So it gets to the middle of its swing and it's peak. And then it starts to slow down again. So the speed starts to slow down while it keeps moving to the right. Okay, so the graph would look like this. Okay, it's now slowing down, and speed is getting smaller, but it's still moving towards the right. Until it gets to the point where the furthest right it goes, and then it turns around and starts to move towards the left. So now the speed is towards the left. Faster, 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 until it gets the fastest when it's at the middle. Still moving left, but slower, 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 until it gets to the furthest left. Again. So this path, and this is not going to be right, okay? This trajectory is not a picture of the path it traces through space. It's a picture of the relationship between two quantities. Where is it, and how fast is it moving? That's what a phase space is. It's a map of the relationship between the quantities that you've chosen to describe a physical system. Right? That's the two quantities we chose for a pendulum. It didn't have to be those two quantities. It could have been something else. Although I'm not sure what else you could measure about a pendulum that would change over time. But this phase space diagram is an abstract space that relates two quantities, in this case, position and speed. 
And the change of those quantities relative to one another is the trajectory of that system, the system being the pendulum, through phase space. Say that again. The change of those qualities this, this in relationship to each other right. is the trajectory of that system in phase space. Is the trajectory of that system so phase space is an abstract okay, got it. It's, ab it's just it's an, abstract, like a, it's an abstract representation. It's an abstract representation. It's more like what a normal person would refer to as a graph than mm -hmm. a space, mm -hmm. right? But mathematicians and physicists, because we think in the abstract, can refer to any collection of mathematical points as a space in the sense of a system as it changes these quantities can move, quote unquote, through this space. Okay? But the movement that we're talking about in a phase space diagram isn't literal movement. It's the change of these two quantities relative to one another. Now, the phase space diagram I just drew up here is for an idealized, imaginary physics pendulum that doesn't exist in the real world. Okay, if I swing a real pendulum, what does it gradually do over time? Okay, it gradually stops. It gradually goes a little bit less and less yeah. to the sign, and it gradually gets slower and slower and slower. What would that look like in the phase space diagram? If I kept going, okay? Moving to the right goes all the way to the right, stops, starts moving to the left, goes all the way this way. Does it come back to where it started? No. No, where does it come back to? Each time it comes a little less and okay. a little So what does shape... Does it actually go slower, though? It's, it, well, it goes a little bit slower every time it passes the middle. It's moving a little more slowly. So what would the path, if I kept going, what would it look like? I mean, if you, if you kept allowing yeah. it to go... It would look like a spiral. Yep. It would gradually swing less and less back and forth right. and slower and slower until finally it came to rest with position zero and speed zero. It would right. be hanging like that. And that's your sort of fixed point in the phase space diagram where your attractor is where all pendulums eventually wind up, right? They all wind up stopped, just hanging like this. So that's your attractor, the, the center point. That's. Uh, we should check with Ralph on this to make sure that the way I'm using the, the language and the way he's using the language is the same. But what I would say is, for the phase space of a real, <coughs> what this is called a damped pendulum, right? A pendulum that's being slowed down by air resistance and friction. That the, the state where it's at rest in the center is an attractor. Because no matter where I start it, it's always going to wind up at that final state. Mm -hmm. And I can draw this diagram from different starting points, right? I could say, uh, what happens if I start the pendulum way out here? And then it would start here, and it would wind up going faster, but when it ended, it would wind still up. still do the same thing. Right, it would wind yeah. up the same thing. Right. If we want another example of phase space, we can go to Ralph's, um, where's the example he gave of the wolves and the sheep. Right. right. So this was his two-state complex dynamical system. And he showed this graph where the horizontal variable was time, right? And I think everybody got this from the first discussion. It's a pretty old-fashioned example, standard. Everybody encounters it in a psychology class somewhere or a math class somewhere. Well, the number, it's also very logical. Because and it's very intuitive, right? Because the sheep reproduce and reproduce and reproduce, okay? The wolves eat and eat and eat and eat. Um, but if they eat too many, the number of sheep goes down, and right. then the number of wolves goes down. It's just like the fox and the pheasant on Long Island. Right. So this is a, a time diagram. <laughs> Let's translate this into a phase space diagram, right? Where the two axes are number, I don't even need negative axes because you can't have a negative number of sheep. So I'll just draw it like this. Well, sheep yeah. parts. Right. Well, I'm, actually, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, the number of sheep is your horizontal axis, and the number of wolves is your vertical axis. So this isn't a picture of anything. It is a graph of a relationship. Yeah. Okay. So you start with some small number of sheep, and the number of sheep goes up, 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 up. Okay. The number of wolves stays pretty much constant for a very, very long time. So the number of wolves doesn't go up. The number of wolves is still the same. Okay. And so finally, 
about just before the number of sheep peaks, the number of wolves starts to go up very fast. So suddenly the number of wolves is going up, 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 up. So the graph in phase space would look something like this. And then suddenly the number of sheeps, sheep crashes while the number of wolves is still going up. So the number of wolves is still going up, but the number of sheep is going down. So that would look something like this, right? Wait, wolves wait, are still wait, going okay. up, the wolves sheep are is going, going down. Okay, no. Right, we're getting bigger this way, okay. smaller that way. And so finally, they're both going down here fairly precipitously. So down, 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 down. So something like this, I mean, the numbers aren't exactly right because I'm just eyeballing this. But something like this would be the trajectory in phase space of this wolf-sheep complex dynamical system. There's some kind of path like this that tells you if I have this number of sheep and this number of wolves, what will be next generation, next generation, next generation, next generation. Well, it becomes a cycle. Yeah, well, in this case, yeah, it does become a cycle. If you started at a different place, though, it wouldn't necessarily. Well, in other words, if you started with zero wolves, right, the number right. of sheep would just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Well, so that's it's sort of like the deer population of Africa. Right. If you started with a bunch of wolves and only a few sheep, it would just right. go like this, and then the number of wolves would go to zero because they'd all starve to death. And so depending on where you start, you could wind up with different people. Sometimes you wind up with a loop. Sometimes you wind up going to infinity. Sometimes you wind up crashing back to zero like the pendulum. So these trajectories are, again, abstract paths through this mathematical, um, quote-unquote, space.